step up is important for me. Bojo Kinawea, Bidu Yabamatsi, Venes Nadijnakaz, Bawatin and Donjaba, Makwe and Dodem, Ojibwe Nishnabe Kwe and Dao. Greetings, everyone. My name is Jessica. My spirit name, my Anishinaabe name, is the little thunderbird that brings good life. I'm so grateful to be here um, in this territory as a guest um, and also to think about my Anishinaabe ancestors who are also a part of stewarding these lands um, and that remind us that when we walk on the lands of our ancestors that we always walk gently and with careful footsteps. What time is it on the clock of the world? Was one of the core questions that American revolutionary Grace Lee Boggs asked for decades of everyone she had the opportunity to meet. The answers she received helped to deepen her understanding of the world. Grace passed away in 2015 at the age of 100, leaving behind her a legacy of conversation, curiosity, and possibility that she cultivated with each individual she met and with each burning question she asked. My answer to Grace's question is that it is time to imagine peace and healing in our futures and believe that they could be possible now. In Anishinaabe culture, belief is one of the early teachings that we are gifted through our creation story. Our worlds, our realities are shaped by our beliefs and the belief in what is possible. Our actions are guided by believing in ourselves to live out mino bemadzuin, to live a good life, a life of abundance, a life in relationship to ourselves, our spirits, our communities, our ancestors, Mother Earth, and all that she gives life. The Earth, our mother, her veins pulsing across her surface and the shape of rivers and oceans, sacrifices much for us because she loves us. And she teaches us that this love is interconnected generationally through our relationships with one another. We learn early on as Anishinaabe, as Anishinaabe to internalize that love so that we begin our journey on this earth filled with love for ourselves. Love, wisdom, respect, bravery, humility, honesty, and truth. These values are a set of beliefs that shape our worldview and form the foundation of our spirituality as Anishinaabe. At one time, the Anishinaabe creation story was shared with the smallest of our children to the oldest members in our community. And in that way, we lived for thousands of years believing that Mino Bemadzuin, living a good life, was possible and that we were forever surrounded by unconditional love from the earth. The disruption of our way of life came with the process of colonization that led to the establishment of Canada and the United States. This process was driven by a different set of beliefs. The first came with the blessing of the Christian church. It was called the doctrine of discovery. The belief that it was the right of explorers to lay claim to territories uninhabited by Christians. Other beliefs to follow included that the land was not to be respected, but to be bought and sold, and that Indians were a problem that was getting in the way of European progress. Colonial violence targeted our spiritual beliefs by creating laws that made it easier to take away our languages, our cultural practices, and ceremonies. Our children were stolen from their homes and put into Indian residential schools, and later on in foster care, believing that we didn't know what was best for our families. Our communities were pushed onto reserves, our women murdered and missing, treaties formed and treaties broken, promises made and promises broken. And over time then, it has been embedded in the Canadian psyche to believe that our women, our land and our children are disposable. When I first heard our creation story, I was not a child, but I was already a quarter way into, a, into my life. It was the first time that I heard someone say that I am the most beautiful person in creation. And that affirmation was something that transformed the way that I thought about myself. And it was until recently that I embodied an unspoken belief that I myself was disposable in my relationships, in my work, in my worth. I realize now that these are the limiting beliefs that are passed down generationally 
beliefs that I need to reconcile in order to find my way back to fulfilling Mano Bamadzuin. I'm grateful for the resilience of my ancestors, and I'm grateful for my resilience. Turning intergenerational trauma into intergenerational love for myself and my community has now become my mission through the work that I'm doing alongside others through the for work of the 4Rs Youth Movement. Our work is grounded in the idea that in order to change the beliefs embedded in us through colonization, young people will need to engage in critical dialogue on who we are and the past that have brought us to where we are. This kind of conversation involves bringing people together with significant difference, and grappling with the complexities of our history and our identity. The context of our history and how we understand history matters because it forms the foundation for what we are made to believe about ourselves and about each other. The beliefs embedded in colonialism are limiting. They are the ones that disconnect us from loving each other and the earth. They are strong because they know no geographic, cultural, or generational boundaries. Feelings of fear, anger, hate, and mistrust that keep us suspended in patterns of pain and despair. And so in Canada, while reconciliation asks of us to restore balance to the relationship between the colonized and the colonizer, in order to do so, we must transform what we believe. And to be true and consistent to the land where, all, where we find ourselves here on Turtle Island in Canada, the starting point of this transformation is in relationship to Indigenous people and restoring our beliefs. Last week, I had the honor of spending four days together with a group of revolutionaries in Detroit, led by Adrienne Marie Brown, a facilitator of social justice work. To Grace's question, what time is it on the clock of the world, Adrienne Marie answers, it is time to close the gap between vision and practice. Time for those of us who seek justice and liberation to be just and be liberated, to be of this place fully. And so I ask of us, if peace is what we seek in the future, in what ways are we being more peaceful in our present? Is lo if love is what we seek in the future, in what ways are we being more loving in our present? If inclusion is what we seek in the future, in what ways are we including those who have been forgotten? If freedom is what we seek, in what ways are we practicing freedom now? If caring for the earth is what we want for our future, how are we caring for the earth now? If reconciliation is in our future, what is it that we are not reconciling in our present? It is no surprise to me that there is a resurgence of indigenous midwives and doulas happening in our community. I believe we are preparing to birth something miraculous. And so if mir miracles are what we seek, then I believe that it's time for us to be miraculous again if we believe that we can. Miigwech. <laughs>